All right, this one is a little different because this was just refinished by someone else. My clients love the style. They've been looking for quite some time, but they did not like the color. And the person that refinished it said she wouldn't change the color. So I've done pieces for them before and they had it delivered to me. I was able to speak with the refinisher. She was brand new. This was one of her first flips. And, um, you know, there were some things that needed to be done differently, but I was able to at least find out her process and what products she used. So the first thing, just need to get started taking off the hardware. I think this was put on most likely with um, a drill or something because it was on so tight. And they also told me that um, some of the, well, at least one of the screws had been broken. So it was just over tightened and the top popped off. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But this one is just taking quite some time to get off. Well, one screw. This is going to be a while. I won't bore you with all of them, but we'll get through the first one here. So this hardware is not original to the piece. Um, it looks from all of the patterns of the holes inside it. This has been possibly refinished several times because there are multiple hole patterns inside. So here's one of the screws that is broken. The head's totally broken off, the screw is still there, and it's in there enough that now it's blocking the handle from coming off. So I can't put it off, I, I can't take it off, I can't put it back on with that screw in there. So I decided to grab my drill and see if I can drill that screw out. I started with a small drill bit just to see if I could make enough of a hole in it that maybe I could get the screw to turn or something, but that wasn't working. So back into the garage for a larger drill bit. And then I'm actually gonna have to just drill the whole thing out. But after that, I finally got it to pop off. And it didn't damage the handle, so I'll be able to reuse that. But now I still need to get the rest of that screw out of the drawer. So yet again, I should have just brought all the drill bits out. <laughs> yet again, I'm going back to the garage, get a different size drill bit. And now I'm just going to drill the rest of the screw out of there because when I want to reinstall the hardware, that screw's in my way that's broken off in there. So I'm just checking to see if I can get away with just doing it halfway or if I'm actually going to drill the whole thing through. Well, the screw is finally gone. Apparently I'm having to drill that whole screw out <clears throat> all the way through, so I'll just repair all this so we can attach the um, handle again once it's all repainted. And another that has been stripped. So I had two broken and one stripped screw. One of the things I like to try before I end up drilling that out is a different drill bit. So I try a few of the Phillips different sizes and things, but this one is a square bit. We're going to see if that's going to work. going to go in the trash. Okay, so now that I have all of the hardware removed, I've got everything cleaned up. It's time to get to sanding. So the plan is to get this all sanded today and ready for new paint tomorrow. Thank you. 
stressor. It, it's very rough. Um, I think it's because it was taken in raw wood, primed, and then not sanded in between coats or after the primer, which really raised the grain and then painted. So what I'm going to do is just sand it down so that it's nice and smooth. <laughs> Super smooth now. The inside of the dresser is actually in really good shape. So I'm um, just going to clean this up. And this um, one drawer guide's a little tight, so I'll do some adjusting there. I'll sand it a little and wax it just so it smooth this, uh, glides better. And then we'll just get going on the rest. Here's a good area where it's a little bit of a close up so you can see all of the texture there and it's it looks really bumpy and especially after the sander goes over it for the first couple of times you can see it's almost like orange peel and then um, because it, it's just paint it actually smooths out pretty quickly so it's really important that you have everything super smooth before the primer and then the most important step is removing really sanding again after the primer so i'll show you that in just a few minutes we're gonna go speed sanding on the drawers. I got my orbital sander out. Just gonna go faster this way. I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper on this because I want to smooth it out, but I don't want it too smooth because I still want to have some grip on it so that the new primer and paint have good adhesion. So I'm just going through and sanding everything again all over the dresser. Just want to make sure everything is consistent. So I did the whole body and the nightstands. Going over it with some crud cutter and cleaning it all, and then I'm going to use another rag that's just water that will get, just get off any residue. Okay, this is where we are now. Everything has been sanded and cleaned. I've got a couple areas that have wood filler on them before I had to drill those screws out. But now when you feel these, they're nice and smooth. So that will look nice under a new coat of paint. The hardware that was on the dresser is a little coppery and uh, my clients, are, since they're going to be painting this black, they really wanted this to just be gold. So I'm going to touch that up with some gold paint. Right now I have them all standing up on their ends so that I can just get that front edge. And then I'm going to flip them all down now that that first layer has dried and paint the tops. Once that dries, I also follow up with uh, a clear coat over the top of it just so they have a little more durability to them. I ended up doing uh, several coats. I just do light coats, but I did several coats of this just to make sure it was a nice, consistent color. Well, there's been lots of prep, but we're finally here. It's prime time. This is, you know, not necessarily the funnest part, that's the color, but I really like to get the primer on there because it's an opportunity to see if there's any imperfections. They just kind of pop out after the primer goes on. So you then see any new dents or any areas that you think may need to be caulked. Um, you know, just making sure that everything looks as it should because once you put the paint on, it's a little harder to correct. Things are actually really easy to sand when the primer's on there. I am taking my surf prep. I have a pad, a sanding pad on there um, that is a super fine grit. I think it's actually a fine grit. So it's about a 300 grit sandpaper and I'm going over everything just to smooth out the primer. This is probably the most important time to sand in between coats. When this primer is nice and smooth, the paint just goes on so nice. I'm going back over with a microfiber cloth that's just a little damp so that it catches any dust and keeps it from spreading it around. Okay, here we go. Time for some color. These have those little cubbies on top. And oh, you know, honestly, this is probably the most challenging part is getting the sprayer in to do the inside of these little cubbies. Sometimes I have to lay them down on the ground 
or paint some of it by hand. The sprayer is a little clunky and then you keep bumping it and making marks in your new paint. Anyway, we got this one done without too much of a challenge. And once the cubby was done, you just get going on the rest. That actually probably, it, I think that took more time than it did to paint the rest of the nightstand. But this is a uh, tricorn black, what the uh, client requested. It's just such a, a really pretty black. This is what they call a true black. It doesn't lean cold or warm. It's a real, I guess, a neutral black. Uh, because it doesn't come with any undertones to it. Some of them really uh, show blues or browns, but this black doesn't really give off any of that. It really is a true black. So I'm taking my time painting. I recorded this segment in real time. I'm going to speed it up here in a moment, but I just want you to see what real time looks like. This looks like I'm just painting like a little one inch wide swatch each time I go by, but I'm actually, it's probably about four or five inches wide, but I am overlapping because I want to make sure that that color goes on nice and consistent. Okay, we'll speed things up and watch the rest of this before we get to the next coat. It's important that you are looking at it from all angles. Sometimes I feel like I'm standing on my head making sure that I get all the little pieces up underneath because um, even though this will be sitting down, if someone lays on the floor and looks at it, you know, you're going to be able to see all of that. Uh, there are times when I actually just lay the dresser down to make sure and do the underneath. This one actually had a solid base, so it was very easy uh, to get that straight across. Just going on and finishing up the top. I really take my time here. Some people paint them the long, long direction, and I like to go this way. Uh, here's that cubby again. <laughs> no. But get that all done. <clears throat> Night stands are quick and easy. One more time with the sander across everything. Just really making sure that uh, everything's really smooth. This, this is a super quick sanding because if you've sanded really well after the primer, and this coat goes on, there really isn't a whole lot of sanding to do. So just got through that and cleaned everything up. I also like to do the details um, at this point. And the details are painting the edges of the drawers, um, sometimes taking the drawers out and painting the cabinet if needed. That way, when this next coat of paint goes on, it really brings all that together. If your edges are painted with a brush and you're spraying the rest, sometimes the paint isn't 100% consistent. It'll be a little darker around the edges or what have you. So if you do the details in between the first and the second coat, the second coat brings it all together. Here we go with that second coat. This one will also go on a little faster because um, it's a thinner coat. I tend to do a thicker coat the first time for some reason. And this is just a beautiful paint. I only needed to do two coats. There we are. Beautiful. This is my top coat. I actually did three coats of this, but I'm not going to bore you. I'll just do the one here. But black is one of those that really needs a top coat so that it doesn't need quite so much dusting. Look at that. That's after three coats of top coat. And here we are all finished. Handles are back on. She's now in her new home and clients were very happy. <laughs>